Support for How in the Hell Did I Get Here comes from the Anti-Opiate Medical Alert Bracelet, designed to educate, create awareness, prevent addiction, and help stop re-addiction. Search Etsy.com for the Anti-Opiate Medical Alert Bracelet and use the code PODCAST to save 15% on your purchase. everyone, it's Kim A. Floden, and welcome to episode 23, counting the teaser. I cannot believe we've been doing this podcast for almost six months already. It was a dream for so long, and now it's a reality, and it still blows my mind. I definitely wanted to give a shout out today to you, our listener. Without you, there really is no reason for us to be doing this show, and I cannot even express what it means to have you showing up here with us week after week and listening. There's a lot to choose from in podcast land, and the fact that you give us about 20 minutes of your precious time every week really means a lot. Also, a huge thank you to our Patreon supporters. Thank you so much. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, there's a website called Patreon where you can support your favorite creative people and projects like this podcast, myself, and my sisters. This is an independent podcast and it takes truly hours every week to create it. And even though it's 100% a labor of love, it would also be super nice to feel the love and your participation as a producer by supporting us on Patreon. That's right, when you choose to help us, you're actually helping produce the show by offering that support. So if that sounds cool to you, head over to Patreon to donate monthly or show us some love at Coffee. that's spelled ko-fi.com, where you can buy us a virtual cup of coffee as a way of saying thanks. It really means a lot to myself and my sisters, and it can really help the show grow, improve, and reach more people. So welcome to this week's episode. It's all about weddings. And there will probably be a few more wedding story episodes coming up, so be sure to stay tuned. June is wedding season, and I couldn't think of any better month to have my friend, Linz, former wedding DJ extraordinaire, on the show to share some of his best how in the hell did I get here wedding disc jockey stories. And then after the stories, he and I have a really great and honest chat about what we think it takes to make a relationship work and keep working. Be sure to listen in. This is Kim A. Floden, and welcome to How in the Hell Did I Get Here? Quick note, this episode contains swear words. Also, I want to apologize for today's sound qualities. There's an unknown click that showed up in the recording and a little bit of background noise. Linz is a professionally trained disc jockey, and he's ready to get the party started at Kelly and Chad's wedding. And things are going great until Chad makes a move that is not cool. On the dance floor, in the bar, or pretty much anywhere. My name is Linz Florin. I'm a musician, singer, songwriter, podcaster, all around creative junkie. I was a wedding DJ for several years. Uh, I was hired by a company. They had 20 sound systems and they hired you and trained you. You know, you do weddings, school dances, things like that. So they trained you on how to set up the gear. It was CD players. It wasn't that hard. Uh, they, <laughs> yeah. they taught you how to use a microphone and, and, you know, and then they teach you the cheesy wedding dances, you know, uh, the Macarena, the electric slide. Uh, so this, uh, this was the first <laughs> wedding I DJed all on my own. The couple, Kelly and Chad, they were really nice. Kelly is amazing, really beautiful, really sweet, humble, a great people person. And uh, Chad was masculine. I mean, so he wasn't much fun when it came to the wedding <laughs> okay, okay. planning, you know. <laughs> right. He was bumping a log, grunting a lot. And so when it came to the day of the wedding, you know, I went to the wedding, I got, I, you know, they trained me, right? So I'm there to get set up early and to talk to everybody. It's a country club, but it's attached to a bowling alley for some reason. <laughs> okay. And, yeah. <laughs> and, we're in the, and we're in the basement. There's three weddings going on in different ballrooms in the basement of this building. It's very weird. Uh-huh. But I get there, I set up, 
I meet the person who does the cake. We we talk, whatever. And so I'm calming my nerves by making sure we're all on the same page. At some point, I hear that the wedding party is coming in their limo and I go outside. And, you know, Kelly is just radiant. Like she is at the top of peak. This is peak Kelly. (laughs) You know? <laughs> she's at the top of her wedding she's game. She's at the top of her wedding game. She's planned this event. She's all coming together. Meanwhile, Chad just slammed a Coors Light can on his forehead. Like one sip of light beer away from being like blackout drunk. I mean, oh. he had just really overdone it. And so uh, my parents were alcoholics. I know what to do. I've got him some food. And uh <laughs> oh. What really surprised me was, like, he was drunk, but he wasn't that much drunker than the rest of the room. Uh, And he even gave, like, a semi-eloquent toast. He was super sweet with his mom, and it was just really funny to watch this meathead guy get sweet for a minute. So Kelly's sister, Stephanie, was the maid of honor, and, you know, she's younger. She she seemed to me like the, the, the smartass of the two, and she was clearly like restraining her judgment of her sister for marrying Chad, (laughs) you know? There's a lot going on here. (laughs) A lot of undertones. A lot of undertones. (laughs) Uh, She does an amazing toast. Like her toast is, is great. We move into the party and like, this is a fun family. I mean, the grandma comes out for all the funk tunes onto the dance floor and joins everybody. They have a group dance to the song Cecilia by Simon and Garfunkel, which I've never seen. I mean, that's not a dance <laughs> yeah, song. That's not really, no. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, because it is like, it's got that beat to it. And so they right. just like made it into a line dance, I think. I don't know. <laughs> they just know how to have a good time. I didn't have to bust out any of the cheesy DJ tricks. Mm. You know, like they were just, they were doing it. So, you know, coming up on last call and I, over at the bar, Chad is ordering a drink. He doesn't need one, but he, he wants another. Things are going great for Linz at his very first wedding DJ gig, and it looks like everyone is having a great time. Until what happens next. Find out after the break. Hey, it's Kim, and thanks so much for listening. And I really hope you're enjoying today's show so far. I'm just popping in to ask you a quick favor, which is to consider helping to support this podcast at Patreon. It's super easy. Just pop over to patreon.com and search for How in the Hell Did I Get Here or hit the button on our website at howinthehellpodcast.com. What's in it for you? Well, for one thing, you're helping make a dream come true. And what's better than that? Also, we've got some great perks over there for you, including a chance to get to know myself and my sisters with a special slideshow from our lives, ad-free listening, discounts up to 50% off the Merch in Our Fun store, and free coloring books and more. Check it out today. You can choose to support us for as low as $2 a month. And now, back to the party where Chad, the groom, is feeling no pain when he encounters his new sister-in-law, Stephanie, at the bar for Last Call. So, you know, coming up on Last Call, and I, over at the bar, Chad is ordering a drink. He doesn't need one, but he, he wants another. And... His sister-in-law is right next to him, and he turns to her and basically tries to get her to go to bed with him. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, I mean, no. He's probably not making any memories at this point, right? It's not. Mm-mm. This is his subconscious talking. Uh, but it was talking loud enough for his bride to notice the commotion and, like, come over from across the room and see what was going on. And all I saw was this white blur as Kelly ran away crying and left the party before everybody else and left her husband, left her whole family and left the party. Chad, I think he just like kept ordering his drink. It's like he, I don't, he didn't, didn't understand the him. ramifications of what he was doing. You <laughs> no, know? no. It was a he weird He might have been scene. getting married and divorced like within yeah. 48 hours. No, it's like, <laughs> this was not a Hallmark. If I've ever seen one. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, I start, like I had 45 minutes left of my time, but it was time to go. So I started packing up my equipment. It was a weird, it was, the tone was all weird. I, the yes. funny, what song do you play? What song yeah. do you play when that happens? Nothing with any sexual overtones. That's no. for sure. You have to be very careful. Yeah. You have to be very careful. And you're like, at last. Right. You know? <laughs> like that's not going to do. <laughs> yeah. Like romance oh my is, God. is wrong. Uh, yeah. Anyway, it's, it's a funny, weird thing. And so, Somehow, you know, they sent me a thank you card and a tip after the fact. 
Uh So that was interesting. And then about a year later, I ran into Stephanie, the sister-in-law, and she said that they were still together. Oh, well, see, I didn't see that coming. I didn't either. I I guess it's true love. (laughs) I guess so. But I doubt it. I'm getting married for the first time in a big traditional church wedding. And just where in the hell is my missing bridesmaid? I have a wedding story. So I've been married twice. So my first wedding took place in the Midwest and I had a bridesmaid who, she was supposed to be my personal attendant, but I had to switch her out because my other lady was pregnant. So she had to Mm. come in as a bridesmaid. The dresses were pale pink and the wedding was at like four in the afternoon or something. I can't really remember, but we were all at the church getting ready, doing all that stuff. She just wasn't there. I, no one knew where she was. This was in the 80s. You, there were no cell phones or anything. And so we're all like, where is she? And finally she comes waltzing in and she was from the South. And I'm like, where have you been? And she's like, I just decided I should just go on a bike ride. And I'm like, a bike ride? I'm like, I'm getting married today. And she's like, she was, I don't know what her thing was, but uh, then she got there and she was all like, she decided like, oh, she didn't like where the bow was on the dress. And it was just like all this stuff. And I'm like, no, 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 just leave it. So we, we get her all, we get everything all lined up. Oh, and then she went into the basement and found the, like the altar wine and got into that. She disappeared. And then I find her in the basement, like in the altar wine. And I was like, at that point, like a good Catholic girl. And I was like, oh, we're going to hell. (laughs) We're going to hell. In a head basket. <laughs> so she, I get her under control. We are going to like, we're ready to walk down the aisle. My sister-in-law steps on my dress and like a whole row of buttons goes flying off minutes before I have to walk oh. down the aisle. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't cool. I think she put her heel through my hem. And so, that, you know, but I'm keeping it together. But then my friend, she does walk down the aisle and I had a big church wedding and it was a very long aisle, like very traditional. Well, later after that, my like relatives are coming up to me and, and saying, who is that woman? Because the way, <laughs> this is so bad, <laughs> the way the light was hitting her when she was walking down the aisle, we could clearly see she didn't have on anything under the dress. Oh my God. Can you even imagine? I was yes. like. Yeah, what? I think I've. <laughs> yeah. I that think was there's the end been of our one. I, I saw one one unfortunate bridesmaid with a a light passing through a dress that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, I think my uncle said like I could see clear into the next year, and I'm like, oh my god, this is yeah. not good, <laughs> not good. I asked Linz to come on, how in the hell did I get here? Because I was sure he'd have some great stories as a former wedding disc jockey. And as you've heard, he does. And you'll be hearing more from him. What I didn't expect was this interesting, honest, and open conversation. I got married for the first time, I think, in 1984. So that was Mm. a long time ago. And I think I got divorced in 94. Hey, that's a good run. I call that a successful marriage. Oh, yeah. (laughs) The second time I was married for 14 years. So I'm like, hey, I got 24 years under my belt. You got a couple of good ones in. Yeah, I got got a couple good runs in. And, you know, I don't know if I need to do that again. feel similarly. But I'm just going to say, in my reality, I think, and I thought this before, but I'm like, if you love somebody and you want to be with them, there's no problem with that. Just do that. Why do you need to bring the government into it? Yeah. You know, why do you need to make, because once. I think for, you know, church folks, it's pretty clear why. Well, but that's The true. rest of us. You know. No. But I, but I have, I see, see if you back me up on this, but the both times when I got married, I really did feel like there was a shift in the relationship because like once you're married to somebody, you have a legal bond to that person. Like there is like, okay, now it's going to be a little bit harder to like untangle this if we ever have to. I think it like is a multiplier on the pressure you feel to make it work which yes adding to the pressure doesn't make it work better no you know, it doesn't it, there is a weird it, thing that happens when you marry someone I, yeah. i'm glad you I, think so too and there's some people that you know that they weather that storm 
You know, oh. I, I think it's possible. And I think sometimes you don't even know who it's going to be. I mean, I, I see some couples and I go, oh, that's not going anywhere. But somehow, if they <laughs> turn towards each Chad. other at the right time, yeah, Joey and Chad. <laughs> I'd love well, to go I back because that's probably now 20 years ago. We've all met elderly people who are like, have been together forever. And mm -hmm. they're just like two peas in a pod. And somehow they got past it. But they also got married a lot longer ago. And it may have been different then, that whole feeling of... There may have been fewer of, I don't know, the dating distractions and all that kind of stuff to while you were cementing the bond. Yeah, I know? kind of think it might have to do with the social mores at the time that are different mm -hmm. than they are now. Yeah. So, But I do, I do think it's like adorable when you meet those people that have been married forever and they are like really in love. I met a couple recently and they'd been married for 54 years and the he was giving a talk and the wife was sitting next to me and she whispered, she goes, oh. He's just wonderful. We still hold hands. And I thought that is really awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And my opinion is even if the times were different, they had to continue to choose to express their love for each other. Because the big way I see it fall apart for people is that they assume the other person knows how they feel now yes. that they're married. Yeah. Or something. Like read and, my mind. It's <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're no, and I would say like the, it's incumbent upon you to go the other direction with it. Which is yeah. to say, like, once you get married, you have to become more emphatic about your love because you have to tolerate each other's minute by minute yeah. terribleness, you know? Right. There's always stuff that people don't like about each other. There's just going to yeah. be stuff. And it's not going to get, in my opinion, it doesn't get better. It gets more irritating unless you can find a way to adjust to it and just live with it. Mm -hmm. And if you can find it kind of cute, you're even <laughs> you're even doing better. That's a great day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So. I, I definitely think for me, I sometimes just have to tell myself, turn on the charm. You know, like mm -hmm. hey, I've, I've been staring at the computer all day. I've been making music and editing podcasts. I haven't had to interact with anybody. I don't have my warm and shiny fuzzy on. And so like if I'm going to meet up with Marianne, I sometimes have to give myself a pep talk oh, and yeah. say, all right, dude, hang on her every word. Show her you love her in every way you can and be present. And if I do one of those things, I'm a great boyfriend. Exactly. So. Yeah, exactly. I don't think people get to hear two people who have been through divorce and mm -hmm. have made it through life, but it's yeah. good for, for people to hear this and, and yeah. you know how it goes bad and how it can be better and how you can keep at it. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, the game is sort of in the, in the perseverance in wherever you land. You know, yes. Like, Might have to call. How in the hell did I get in this relationship? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's a spinoff. <laughs> yeah, or just that episode name. How the hell did I get out of this relationship? <laughs> how in the hell did I get out? How in the hell did I get in? Yeah. <laughs> Where in the hell am I going? There's I don't know. Thanks so much for listening. Be sure to tune in next week for more wacky wedding adventures and maybe some more behind the scenes chats. Today's show was produced by Kim A. Floden with help from our producers who are supporting the show through Patreon.com and Coffee.com. Today's show features the multi-talented Linz Florence. Among other things, Linz has a couple of podcasts. He just recently started a new one called L.A. Makers, which highlights creative people in L.A. Be sure to give it a listen if you're interested in creativity what it takes to be creative, and more. It's a great show. And you can learn more about Lynn's in our show notes at our website, howinthehellpodcast.com. Thank you to our sponsor, the Anti-Opiate Medical Alert Bracelet. Search Etsy.com for Anti-Opiate Medical Alert Bracelet and use the code PODCAST to save 15%. Our music is brought to you by Silent Partner. Our theme song is Seventh Floor Tango, and our ad music is Blue Skies. Meet you back here next week for more How in the Hell Did I Get Here stories. Until then, pay attention, my friends. You just never know when you might find yourself saying, How in the hell did I get here? There was a VFW hall. Like an, <laughs> I'm already yeah. liking it. Uh-huh. So it's a it's about an hour plus north of uh, Grand Rapids, and I drive up there, and it's like no one has checked it for safety code ever, probably. You know, <laughs> right. I mean, yes. There's a like the whole thing takes place at ground level, but there is a basement, and the rail isn't attached to the bottom. You know, it's just, <laughs> it's like. 
this is a, a death trap okay. uh -huh. to start with, right? I get there and um, the bride and groom are maybe 19 years old. Mm -hmm. The groom is dressed in his Navy uniform because he just enlisted to go to Iraq. Oh, boy. And the bride is drinking, uh, I don't know, a juice box? I, I, <laughs> It just okay. feels like that's what they were drinking. That wasn't right. really good. 